E39 dining intake. Don't do it. Unless you love dining, love carbon fiber, okay. But come on. I think the original air boxes look really good. Excuse the uh, yellow expansion tank. They're just very proportional. They fit in the engine bay. They kind of have this commanding, like, powerful presence. And they flow fine. They totally flow. There you go. Fixed it. Fresh expansion take. They fit fine. But, so, yeah, it'll get you to, to do a couple things, though. Um, oof, but those heat shields. That's actually the worst part about it is those heat shields fitting those things. To get it to all line up, get your bumper back on, was no fun at all. So it's going to get you to address this secondary air injection system, though. I opted to take mine out, and then you get to remove this hard line across the front of the motor. It's really nice to have that gone. You can use Shoddy's plugs to seal up the motor. This is why you want to do it, though. It comes with the air temperature relocation kit. These motors are terrible for heat soak. Once that happens, the motor pulls timing, and you have no more power. You can do this on its own, but it's nice that the dining kit actually addresses this problem, which makes it a win. This video is going to go over the install, what I did, got to address, like I said before, the temperature relocation kit, the secondary air pump removal. Also goes into the fog light covers, which is really nice. Something about that that makes me happy to make those functional. Air actually passes in through there, it gets diverted. Um, to where you can have the air filters makes a lot of sense does it make a ton of power no but it's just something about it that makes sense the ram air effect if you will anyway here is my video this is a long one there's a lot of work in here but hope you enjoy learn something don't do it sap secondary air pump so i've coded this thing out years ago um in here everything torn apart so I think it's time to take this thing out of here so the question is I don't know this this line right here you can't really see it goes to the engine I'm hoping I can just kind of leave it dangling with no ill, Ill effects since it's disabled I think it I don't know that it runs or not I can't remember I think the computer just um, doesn't recognize any errors uh, yeah, meaning coded out. But one thing with the dine and intake, you gotta relocate the sucker. So I'm just gonna freaking delete it, man. This is like what, five pounds of mass in the front end. Let's get it out of here. So with this out, another shoddy thing is uh, he's got some delete plugs on pre-order, probably in the prototyping phase. So this will actually delete uh, all of this crap off the car with these plugs that go into the block. So get this thing out of here now. Let's go weigh it. SAP pump, let's weigh this thing. Well, uh, hold on, let me guess. I don't know, four pounds. Oh, yeah, almost. Template, cut it out from the cold air intake instructions. This is kind of uh, crazy. But um, this is a difficult cold air install. Most of them are a 15 minute job. So I've got to actually cut out this lower um, piece. It's really, it's holding in the, uh, the AC component and the uh, SAP pump that was here before. So I actually have to remove this because otherwise the, the intake tube does not fit. You'll see it interferes where we have to bolt it up. So trimming this sheet metal is going to allow this to fit. This blade is a little dull. This is how you cut your freaking hand wide open. Ah! Install the Dynan intake air temperature sensor. So if you have brake ducts, uh, the Dynan spec, the sensor is going to collide with your plastic ducting, right? This is the um, 
OEM Plus mod to get your brake ducts functional. So I actually kind of moved mine up a little bit higher and kind of on this angle here. So it's pointed in at just like the slightest angle. You can see the sensor right here, uh, but still in a airflow path. So I think that should be okay. Um, it, it may touch the sensor a little bit, which is not ideal, but basically the, the top of this is somewhat in line with this rubber piece. Um, so I think that should be good there. But routing, now I'm on the wiring and routing. So I am routed through the, um, this hole right here. Um, I think we'll be good there. The kit says to kind of route it around and up through the intake hole. But I was trying to be, um, trying to hide this wire as best I could. So I routed it under the headlight bracket and then you can see it here around and then up the main channel. And now I'm actually gonna, I think it says to put it in through the main, but I just don't know how you're gonna get into that. Um, I found this at this blank one here. So I'm gonna take this plastic piece off and see if I can't route it uh, into that. So this part is a little bit long winded, but the basic idea is you wanna take the two wires, one's a ground and one's the intake air temperature sensor wire and route it to the ECU box. And you're basically gonna splice in these two wires to the uh, main harness. And that's a simple idea. You're splicing in these two wires to bypass um, the other intake air sensor. So uh, I'm going to let this play out. This is a bit long-winded, but just to show you all the details of how I did it. Here it is. Another thing I have way too much video of, and I spent a lot of time cutting and fitting the heat shield. So there's these two heat shields on um, to really protect the air filters on either side of the bumper from heat, uh, from the engine, the radiator area. So I just took a ton of time cutting and fitting these shields. Now, ideally these are just kind of plug and play and there's not a lot of cutting and fitting. They are, I think, well um, 
cut out. But I had to fit them uh, a lot closer. It wasn't exactly plug and play. Again, I'm just going to show you a lot of footage here just to kind of give you an idea of my frustration with this thing while I was saying don't do it because there's so much at, at play here. But if I was going to do it, I was going to do it the best I could. And you'll kind of see how I get into tightly fitting these as close as possible. But one thing I'll definitely recommend is to mock up your skid plates. Get your lower plate on and then I've kind of just wedged in my pork chop here. You really want this to be as tight as possible because you're blocking the heat from the radiator area over here because your, your cone filter is going to be right here. So you want this area to be as cold as possible. Anyway, that's the point of this, this shield. You're kind of blocking some holes up here. Yeah, you're blocking some holes up in here. And then obviously like the front of this, uh, this is gonna go into the bumper, I'm guessing, I hope. It's sticking out kind of far, but apparently that's the way it goes. So this doesn't look too pretty, but I um, wanted this to fit as tight as possible and this was kind of in the way, so I just notched this out. Um, and I also notched out this back corner piece to have it just fit a little bit higher but make sure before you do any cutting or whatever just to mock up your pork chops in this because i mean i have it to where like the pork chop just kind of wedges under nicely like there's like like maybe an eighth of a gap um and then once you wedge the pork chop in it's like a nice tight fit so you know airtight would be the goal but that's obviously um kind of crazy but you can kind of see the gap here or can you? So it's just like the slightest there, but you see a little bit of light through there. Just the slightest um, gap so you can wedge your pork chop, this little lip right here into here so it's a nice tight fit. But you can see the profile, how it matches the, the front skid right there. Um, this one, as I think I explained, uh, bolts kind of bolts on right there. Uh, so the next thing you know, not only are you wiring the DME, you get to play with a rivet gun. I didn't have a rivet gun, so I went and bought one at Home Depot today. I got this uh, Arrow model. Uh, there's a couple different models. I just went with the cheaper one. I think it was like 15 bucks. Um, never used a rivet gun before, but I know all about rivets. Uh, put a couple, a couple of these guys in. Went pretty easily. Um, I used an eighth drill bit for this. Uh, these uh, rivets require that. Um, but I did kind of have to work the bit around a little bit. Um, and when you're putting in these rivets, like this sheet metal is not exactly flat. So you're going to have to push really hard on the heat shield to kind of make it conform. Um, all the while, kind of, you know, if you've done your, your mock up correctly, this kind of moves around a little bit. Uh, hopefully, it's not an uber tight fit, but. Anyway, I've got the two in here now. I need to put one more in the back. And I'm actually gonna put like another one up here. They give you extras, uh, so I wouldn't be afraid. I'm gonna actually kind of pull this in a little bit, just like that, just so it's a little tighter against uh, the core support. Um, but that's it. This thing's uh, kicking my butt, frankly. I mean, it's definitely the most intense <laughs> intake. It looks cool though, look at that. Alright, got this side in. This is the driver's side. One more last look at this, but look at that gap. That's what you want. So the pork chop is going to slide into this gap right here. Got the three rivets, one, two, three, in there. And then we'll get the uh, rain deflectors. They're going to mount up here. But I, I'm i going to mount the front bumper. So I got the wheels torn off. That's another thing you should do. For one, getting this last rivet in here, unless you've got a really tight uh, drill bit set up. Yeah, we'll definitely need the uh, tire removed, tire and wheel, to get that sucker in there. But fitting the bumper on here is going to allow the 
rain guard. I want to get that to like the right fitment. Um, if anything, just mocking it up will allow me to see how much wiggle room that piece is. Let me grab that. Okay, so this, they call it a rain water deflector. So I'm not exactly where this needs to mount. There's like a line up here and then there's this line flush here. But obviously you've got the pork chop to contend with because that's going to be in here like this. And you can actually, yeah, it's critical to get this mocked up here. Let's put this up here first. So actually, yeah, see it's got to be back here to clear the uh, mount can't see it but clear the mount where it mounts into the uh, bumper so it's gonna be somewhere in here pretty good fit so you'll see it had to cut this down a little bit to fit the, uh, the front brace but you know like Alex why are you cutting all this stuff well I want this to fit as tight as possible uh, and you know I, I fit this lower piece first and I feel like that's a really good fit and the way this sheet metal and this connects the lower uh, skid plate, it's kind of custom per vehicle. Mine's been kind of jacked with, so it's just what I'm dealing with. Anyway, I got this this gap to where I wanted it. Oh, hello. So I can fit the, uh, yeah, see that nice little gap? It's like an eighth of an inch for the pork chop. And then obviously this is, I had to cut this back, like I told you, to go around the cross member. Um, and then to fit the front bumper. The other side fit a lot better. Anyway, now to uh, mock up the, what do you call it? Uh, rain deflectors, whatever they call them. I need to pop these covers out too, so we can get a, get a look-see. Okay, with the bumper on, I'm trying to figure out the best method to do this. So a lot of people are like, oh, you don't need the bumper on to put all this stuff in here. Well, I'm trying to get all this stuff to fit, um, fit right, fit tight. So I've got the rain water deflector in there now. It's just sitting there. Um, but I basically wanted to do that because I wanted to know how far forward I could fit it, right? So if you come in here and look, Looking straight down, headlight removed. This deflector can only go so far because it contacts the fog light uh, part of the bumper. So what I've done is just kind of backed it off a bit and then marked it with a sharpie. So then when I pull the bumper off, I know how far forward I can come. And then with the bumper removed, I'm gonna mock up the port chop because there's another contact point here. So I need to see um, then where I need to put the uh, water deflector, you know, on the, um, the other axis. So you can see my apprehension with this whole process is really even considering not putting these in here because this is such a, what a mess, man. Like, whatever. Uh, let's put 
these filters on before I put the bumper on. It's the official way to put the sock on. lost audio on this section but what I was explaining here is this trim tool and how to take off the fog light covers if you don't do it this way you will scratch your front bumper because the way this uh, needs to come out if you do it in any other way it'll scratch your bumper so try to take it out this way and you want to kind of pivot it and rotate it towards the car as it kind of comes out just be gentle Dynan gives you new fog light covers. They're an open design, but they ask you to actually trim the tabs on the bumper. So those are the Dynan ones, the ones closest to the camera. And then the ones I ended up going with are those ones in the back. They have like the mesh screen for the opening, which matches the, somewhat matches the mesh of the grill. I like those a little bit better. And you don't have to trim the tabs in the bumper. It made sense if I ever wanted to reverse the kit. So I'm using the Sim Gloss gloss black here and here's the final product so the air comes into this and immediately hits that rain deflector but what I'm told is that it actually is charging that area with positive pressure so the air filter has that good clean air to pull from that's it for the intake so really it's just attaching your mass airflow sensors and your intake tubes and buttoning everything up we are 22 minutes into this video, but I wanted to cover blocking off the secondary air system at the motor. Since I opted to remove the pump, I wanted to take the next step and remove the hard line across the motor. There are two plugs you'll need, as well as some vac hose caps to properly block off everything. I did this while I was having radiator issues a bit later in my journey to refresh this car. I did it with the radiator out, and that's not necessary, but it did give me a ton of room to work, so that was an ideal time to do this talk about while you're in there. So if you ever have the desire to install a Dynan intake and replace your radiator, this is a great while you're in there job. So I'm gonna take this uh, SAP system out. So there's a pump over here, there's a line that goes to the pump itself in the bumper, which I already removed that. But I'll take this hard line and this little other, I think it's like a, some kind of valve or something. Um, and then I've got uh, shoddy speed havens plugs will go into the block there's one here and there's one over here really good opportunity to go ahead and knock that out man yeah lots of oh the neighbor's revving up <laughs> Knox is a little startled he's in here doing his homework all right let's get to it all right i got that hose off so we got one 10 mil here and then we got one more on the other side i am a little uh, wondering what to do with this guy. It looks like some vacuum line. They go under the plenum somewhere. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that. I guess how to terminate it. You see that tin? It's right there. That's what I'm going for. We lost it. We got it. All right, now the real fun begins. Um, do I just pull this thing off? Oh yeah, here we go. That was easy. Like a little wiring harness attached. A little wiring harness off of this. Look at that. This comes right off. Let's take a look at the motor. So another benefit people say is it makes it a lot cleaner. You don't have this line running across here. Definitely uh, simplifies it. So now I'm going to get, get the plugs and before I forget, uh, plug these two sides up. There they are. My neighbor's lawn service decided to come on a Monday 
8 p.m. So we're gonna get a little bit of that special sauce, 10 W60. Lubricate them rings. Just so you can get a bit of a reference. The long one is gonna replicate that right there. The short one. Holy crap, look at that thing, it looks clogged. Look at all the carbon build up. I mean, you can just kind of see that black, like soot. So that's where these plugs are going. So I'm actually outside the garage because I was doing all that, uh, dropping the radiator and the cooling out. So I'm out here. Um, so what I ended up doing, yeah, so basically I'm apologizing for the light. The light sucks. Let's go over here. So I ended up like scraping the, um, the uh, the hole in there because the, the the plugs weren't going in. So now I'm actually gonna take a wire brush and kind of clean the uh, surface out. So hopefully it'll seat a little bit better. I'm actually taking my mirror. Next up will be a uh, compressed air gun. Just blast that stuff. Okay, so I'm doing some trickery with a mirror and my camera on a full-on zoom, but I started scraping at it and it looks like some kind of copper or brass like seating surface. So that's what I was trying to kind of clean this thing out. So I'm going to take an air gun um, to this thing and see what happens. If I can kind of zoom out and see what I'm doing. I've got the mirror here and that's what I was doing. I was actually angling you guys in to see that. You can see it kind of at a crazy angle right there. All right, that worked wonders. Sorry, didn't film it, but I got the air gun and blew it out after. Um, made a ton of debris flying everywhere. Let me see if I can get you a shot. All right, here we go. Much cleaner, right? It was black before, so that seating surface, whatever material it is, copper, bronze, um, is showing itself. So I just put a little oil back on the plugs and I'm gonna try to reseed them man the lighting really does suck out here so I was gonna show you this um, technique I had going <laughs> so I'm putting in the 10 millimeters uh, into the block to secure the, the plugs so I'm actually turned around backwards able to get a, uh, a good angle to hand tighten this because tightening with a wrench is, is like painful it's like a i don't know 16th of a turn you know 200 turns anyway i'm able to kind of get like this good angle on it so we're going to tighten that 10 millimeter just above the gold uh what do you call it a little um uh flange there we'll tighten that up and then i'm going to tighten that uh five millimeter hex going into the actual plug itself. Now I'm going to be a little careful on that one. It feels pretty snug, so no need to, to beat on it. Uh, here we go, five millimeter hex. So that was already snug, so I just made sure it was snug. We're good. All right, coming over to this one. Let's make sure we got this. Tighten down. Then once you got it tight, get your five hex on there and snatch it down. Good to go. I think we're done. Yeah, that's it. SAP delete. Uh, the only thing I would consider is what to do with this guy over here. I'm gonna um, look it up a little bit, but this little hose right there, oh, right there, that's just kind of dangling there. So I need to figure out what to do with that. I wanna say it probably goes into the plenum, into the, the vacuum system, um, but I'll confirm. Here's the confirmation. So here is that hose. This is from Real OEM. So this is the one I was removing or wanted to remove. So basically you got to put a, a cap at number one, a valve cap. I didn't worry about the other hose. You could do a full delete 
and cap that off as well. It's at the throttle bodies. So there's that hose going into that little solenoid valve. Um, so removing it, you got to take the intake elbows out so you can actually get in there and you'll get like a long needle nose pliers to, to get it off and you can snake it through there. It's a bit of a, a search, but very doable. So there's the hose removed. And then what I found at advanced auto parts is these Dorman little vacuum caps. Um, I ended up buying a bunch of these off eBay. Yeah, there's the long needle nose required to do it. So you know I cheated, right? I had the radiator was still off, so I had so much room. You can see all the space in there. It's really nice. So slid that cap on, and that was it. Job complete. I ended up doing this a bit later after I had done the plugs, but cleaned it up, finished it up nice.